Hi everybody, in this video render video, we're going to take a look at 12 tips for D5 render users. We're going to try and do 12 tips in roughly 12, more like 14 minutes. All right, let's go ahead and get going. All right, first tip. Did you know that you can change quite a lot of the texture maps on various objects? So, for example, here under commercial, billboards, there are a lot of different sort of objects we can plop into our actual scene. One thing we can do is go over here, hit I on the keyboard, and actually select the maps. So, right now, I've got my base color map selected. I'm just going to click on that, open up some graffiti from one of the substance projects, and there you go. This is absolutely going to allow you to change out the signage in your commercial shots. So be very useful if you want to change the internal decorations for things like museums or event spaces, but also even if you're just doing urban shots and you want the billboards and signage to look a little bit better. Some will also allow you to change out the opacity map so that you can actually put in a different opacity map. So for example, here, and there we go. And then you can still scale and adjust this as well. One thing that's really cool about this, we can also do this with the actual bus stop assets. Once you've brought in the asset that you want to use, just remember, it'll still have an actual normal map. So we can take that down to zero and we can drop the specularity. And then if we want, we can also turn on emissive and adjust the intensity of this. So here we have a picture of my dog as a puppy, and I've placed him on my billboards. And also please note, the billboards do have a lot of different sides, so there's a lot of elements that you can actually adjust in your scenes. All in all, I think this is so, so great, especially being able to change the billboard artwork to something a little bit better. Next thing we want to mention is the use of parallax planes. Long time D5 users are probably aware of the use of parallax, but if you're new to D5, you probably haven't actually really looked into this, mostly because it was one of those great sort of updates that a lot of people just kind of skipped over. It wasn't as fancy as the new global illumination or path tracing, but it's really good. I'm going to hit M on the keyboard to bring up the asset manager and under the online model library, interior parallax. So parallax is very easy to skip over, but let's take a look at this. I'm going to download one of these, drag it into our scene, and you'll notice as we zoom in, a parallax plane is effectively one with the illusion of depth. You can see as we zoom in and out here, if I look at it from the side, it's a flat plane completely without any depth. But when we look at it from the front, so what we have is effectively a 3D space projection sort of mapped onto a flat plane. Really very useful. And a couple of things about this. When you use these, they're pretty low on the resources. So if you're showing off interiors of maybe a commercial or maybe an apartment complex, you don't have to model and decorate and light every part of the actual building. You just put these planes in where you want the viewer to maybe look, or you'd scatter them all over your, your design to make it look like there's life. These are very, very useful assets, and it gets a little bit easier. You'll notice we have the ability to actually adjust the lighting, so we can take the lighting up or down. We can also adjust the intensity of the lights within the actual scene as well. We're going to adjust the temperature, make it bluer or warmer. And what's really, really cool, you can just adjust the elements within the actual parallax. You can actually move the objects around. Now, this is obviously very useful for commercial property renders, but it's also really good for residential. If we want to take an example of this, let's go here, residential interior. And so, for example, here we are looking in from the side. This is very, very useful. We can adjust the position of the actual assets within the scene, adjust the intensity of the light and how strong the overall lighting is to better match the lighting within your actual scene, your D5 scene. And all in all, I think these are just some of the most brilliantly intelligent and useful assets for architectural rendering. They're fast, they're lightweight, they make your scenes look good, and they save an enormous amount of time, particularly if you do a lot of 
commercial rendering. So you're doing a lot of businesses, storefronts, shops, or mixed use spaces. These are in fact your best friend. Next tip, dealing with icons. It is very frustrating. You're in your D5 scene. Perhaps you're just finding it just really annoying and awkward to see all of these like icons that are just popping up. And sometimes these will pop up for all sorts of different things. Well, it's really, really easy to fix this. Just hit L on your keyboard. It's a small thing, but it makes your life a little bit easier. Ugh. L. When working in scenes with grass in D5 Render, if you found that you have placed all of the grass, but maybe you want to maybe fill in some patches, or maybe you'd like to change the actual grass just a little bit, well, good news, you don't have to hit M on the keyboard and go back and manually add all of the grasses and maybe add in some new ones. In fact, all of your brushes will be stored over here on the right. All you have to do is select one. And you'll see over here we have brush history one, two, and three. And these are all the ones that I've applied in this scene. And what's really cool is at any point you can open up these by clicking on the little toggle item and hit apply to brush. And now when we do that, basically what I have is on this brush is an earlier version. So for example, I can come back in here and I can maybe sculpt some of these back into the landscape. It's such a fantastic way to work. You no longer have to manually add all of your content back onto the brush and redo your grass strokes. All of them will be stored over here. And we can just go and add these as much as we want. And in addition, when we select these, we also have the ability to apply them to the eraser. So if we want to change some of these, we can just erase the actual specific brush. So think of it like this. Each of these brushes has got its own memory. And so we can just turn on the ones we want and paint in different foliage. Very, very handy. Next tip. If you're working with the free version of D5 Render, it can sometimes be frustrating trying to figure out which assets you can use and which ones you can't. If you hit M on the keyboard, you can see we've got all of our models up here and I need to narrow down the focus. Maybe I'm in nature and I'm looking for flowering trees and I need to figure out what I can use and it's annoying to see the pro there. What I can do is go up here, filter, and turn on free only. Now, this will show me only the free assets for use in the free non-pro version of D5. This will hopefully save you a lot of time running through all of the different tabs looking for the assets that you can, in fact, use. D5 comes with a huge, huge library of pretty amazing assets, but if you're doing interior art videos, you can probably never get enough. One great resource at the moment is what was formerly known as the Blender Market, now known as Super Hive, which is kind of a bad name change, but whatever. We're looking for the models from 3D Shaker. Now, if you've used Blender for any length of time, you've probably come across these pretty amazing 3D Shaker assets. They're really good, but they've recently gotten into the creation of some pretty nice assets for D5. Now, they've got a free kit that you can test out, and the free kit looks really, really nice. It's got some lovely looking objects in here. And all in all, I think these are really great. I've used their Blender assets, and I really, really like them. They're very high quality, very modern, and their decorative sets are some of the best out there. What's really great about 3D Shaker is if this takes off, they're going to keep adding more and more to their D5 render collections. And I think you should give them a shot. I'm not affiliated with them, I don't know them, but they're making really good assets and you can never have enough of those. In D5 Render, you can also make your own collections of foliage. Hit M on the keyboard, I'm gonna just drag out a number of different favorited assets. I'm gonna place these just like so. Once you've placed in your assets in the scene, go to the object tree on the bottom left, I'm going to hold down shift, select all of these, right click and make them a group. Now, once I've done that, I can right click on the group itself and go add to local. So now, anytime I'm actually populating a scene, just hit M, go local, and then we should find our models. And there you go. You can see we've got groups and group one. I'm going to drag this out. Yeah. All in all, these look 
pretty nice. And that's a really quick way to add some really lovely custom flower arrangements for interior or exterior scenes. Next thing to note, turn off those annoying transition animations. You're probably working in your D5 scene and you think, I'll snap back to my stored camera. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on scene two. Ugh. It's kind of frustrating and it does eat into your time. Well, how we fix this is really simple. Go up to the three dots on the top left here and turn off the transition animation. It's a very nice feature to have it, but it's also really nice to just go back to where you want your camera to be. When you're working in a D5 scene with a lot of assets and a lot going on, it can help to hit F9 on the keyboard and enter into our full screen mode. This will allow you to basically hide all of the toolbars on the left and the right. And in order to come back, we just hit F9 again. Now we can also hide using F10 and 11, hiding the actual toolbars on the side to the left and to the right. By hitting the type key on the top left, that's just to the left of the number one on your keyboard, you can toggle between the environment effect and inspector tabs. If you're working with terrain in D5, perhaps you've got your foliage established, but then you go ahead and decide that you want to actually edit this. For example, we can click on our terrain and maybe we decide that we actually want to sculpt this a little bit more. You'll notice that the foliage isn't actually respecting this. Now, if you're using painted foliage, there's an easy fix for this. Go ahead and just click on the painted foliage, go up to the brush history, and you'll notice if we hover over this, there is an option to re-scatter. Go ahead and click on that, and now our foliage will snap to the new landscape. And this is incredibly useful if you're making minute changes and you want this to be updated when your actual brushes. Very, very handy. One more thing we want to mention is when working in D5 render with your scene, you can always darken the actual foliage. So you can see I'm looking out here. Foliage looks very lovely, very bright, very clean. But we use the eyedropper. You can actually see you can sample the actual foliage itself. So I'm going to click on this. And you'll notice we can adjust the base color. It's just like any other material with opacity. And so if we want slightly better foliage, you can come in here and just darken the opacity. Just take that down just a little bit. And you can kind of see here, if we look outside, this darker foliage is going to look a lot, lot better. Because, you know, outside of using the path tracer, you know, foliage is very self-occluding. It's very dark. Now, the really cool thing about this as well it's not just limited to the foliage on the trees. We select the actual material for the grass. And you can see if I look at it over here, it's kind of flickering a bit. You can see if we use the eyedropper, grass looks good. But we can also adjust the base color on that and make it much, much, much darker. Now, my thought would be, you know, maybe a little bit less is more on this. You know, be careful doing this. We don't want to make the grass so dark that it ends up looking you can kind of see almost black here but somewhere a little bit more gray i think it's going to just look a little bit more realistic sometimes when you're working in d5 render you might want fog in your scene now an easy way to do that is obviously go down to the weather tab and turn on fog but this doesn't give you an enormous amount of control and it's almost like a universal setting and you have to do a lot of slider work to get the result you're looking for so one thing we can do to fix that is hit m on the keyboard and instead of going to the model tab we go over to particles and we're going to go to smoke and you can see we've got plain fogs here. So I'm going to select one of these, just drag it out into the scene. We've got a couple of options here. We can adjust the width and we can adjust the actual height of our fog. So this is going to allow us to put more specific fog in specific areas. We can also adjust the color transparency, basically how much of really the kind of the light is affecting the color of this. For example, we could make it red or blue, which could look good for special effects. And on top of that, we can also adjust the velocity. And it's hard to see this right now, but this is basically how fast this fog is actually going to be moving. And you can see by cranking it all the way up to the right, this fog is moving pretty fast. All in all, these fog planes, or plane fog as they're listed, will actually give you a really good 
dramatic result and it's not a global slider so you can put these wherever you want and with that we are done thank you so much for watching really do appreciate it i hope you found one or two of the tips for d5 render useful they're all tips and tricks that i kind of picked up while working on a current project which is the d5 community challenge for this year so hopefully i'll do a little breakdown on that soon but again thank you so much for watching and I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.